Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. This uh, YouTube video is about Microsoft Word. I've done a number of Microsoft Word videos, and if you put a nice comment in the bottom there with a suggestion about other videos that you'd like to see, I'd be more than happy to do a few. Uh, I had a very nice comment from Jeff Brooks who said, if you decide to make another YouTube video, and he had three questions, so I thought I'd bang out those real quick three questions here. And I'm sitting here in Microsoft Word. Uh, first question he says is, um, how do you create a format with two columns where the text overflows into the second column? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a lorem ipsum generator right here. This is lorem ipsum or lipsum.com and I'll go and I'll say give me 10 paragraphs of lorem ipsum. This is just fake text so this way I can just pick some random text. I'm going to go and control C and copy that and then I'm just going to drop into Word here and of course I can hit control and scroll. I'm holding down control with my left finger and I'm scrolling. This will allow me to get a little more flexibility here. And I'm just going to hit paste. Looks like I ended up with about two pages of lower mips. So I've got a page and you see this little break here? I can actually double click on that. So if we zoom out, look, I've got two pages. You see that center break? I can double click. Basically don't show me the little part at the bottom of the page I don't care about. If I want, of course, I can go to View, Multiple Pages, see them side by side. That gives you a sense of what things look like. So his question is, how do you make a format with two columns where the text overflows? Well, it's an interesting. If I want the entire document to have two columns, from here, I can go to Layout. I can say Columns 2, and that automatically flows. So if I'm down here at the bottom, and I'll start typing in all caps, hey, this is all caps, you can see that I've flowed from here to here. Okay, that's automatic. Okay, now here's a part that might be more interesting. What if I wanted just these two paragraphs to be multiple columns, right? What if I wanted that? That might be a little bit more difficult. I want these two to be two columns, the one above to be one column, the one below to be another column. I want to point out as you see me moving around here, if I double click, that selects a word, and if I triple click, one, two, three, one, two, three, that collects, selects the entire paragraph. So double click, triple click. Isn't that nice? Okay. Let's see if we can make these two. So you might think, oh, I'm going to select that. I'm going to go columns, two columns, and that would in fact work. But they don't tell you what they're doing underneath and how you might do that manually. Well, what they're doing is what's called a continuous section break or a column break. So I'm going to do that manually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit enter here, and I always like to work with paragraph marks on. The paragraph mark tells you right here where you pressed enter. It shows you your white space. It shows you the difference between a shift enter and a enter, a paragraph mark. So I just like to give myself a little space sometimes. I'm going to say insert, and there's choices here. Break, page break is one of them, okay? you want to actually do a different kind of break here, not just a page break. Now, sometimes you can get lost in all of this stuff. In fact, insert break might seem obvious, but if you go to layout, breaks has its own menu. Okay? There are page breaks, there are column breaks. Text following the column break begins in the next column. Or you can do a continuous one where you switch the number of columns. So I have one and then two and then one. So we can do a couple of things there. First, let's go and say I want to do a uh, continuous break. So here's a section with some formatting. Now in here, let's go and say two columns. And now you notice that because I did that while I had this chunk selected, everything after here is two columns until the next section break. Okay. So we said we'd try a couple of paragraphs. Let's go down to here. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little space. I'm going to say breaks, continuous. Okay, then I'll delete, delete, put those away. And then from here, I'm going to say columns one. Okay, if I turn off my paragraph marks, and look how nice that is. These, yeah, see that? See how it flowed? See how I did the selection down and then over to the other side? One column, there's a section break, another column, and then back to one. That's the same thing that happened when I selected the whole section and then picked my columns. But it's nice to know what's happening underneath, and you can see what's happening underneath. Again, if you turn on your paragraph marks, 
You can see the section break here, the section break there. Now here, I could, if I felt like it, maybe I could do it actually, we'll say it right here. We could say layout breaks column break. Okay. And that would basically have us stop there. We basically want this to stay together. Then we break to the next column. So sometimes you want it to flow, and sometimes you don't. Okay, so that was his first question. That was a great question. What do you do for spacing in tables since tabs don't work in tables? Sometimes you see people do something like this. They put their name up here, and they say, all right, I'm going to tap, 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 tap. All right? Actually, you look at that. That's interesting. Look at that. I just put my name in there. Tap, 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 tap. See how that goofy that looks? Something's going on, right? What are we missing? Is there a... Maybe I did not clean up after my columns. I actually had two columns. You could see that they're invisible there. Okay. Sometimes there's invisible things. Again, you can go like this and turn on that. But what you really want to do in this context is we want to turn on our ruler. So when I say view ruler, okay, I'm going to say my name again. You don't, of course, want to be doing that. And you'll notice that they're trying to keep you from doing that. You thought that this would go and fill up my space with tabs, didn't you? See what they're doing? They set the indent. They actually moved that indent for me. Okay, and if I don't like that, I can say knock that off. All right? Put it all the way back the way we had it before. And I could say see if I can type my name successfully here. Tab, 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 space, 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 tab, tab, tab. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to change your, your indent, either your first line indent or otherwise. Now, how does that apply to tables? Well, if we go and insert a table, and we'll just draw ourselves a nice little table here, and we start putting stuff like this, Okay, how do you tab? See, when I hit tab, it moves from cell to cell. What I really want to do to control my white space is I can select like this. See, I'm hovering there. I'm going to select the whole column. And then I can change these. I can actually move the indent inside. Give it a little space there. That's how you control white space inside of a table. Isn't that cool? And Mr. Brooks's last question, how do you get rid of an extra page when the table is the last thing on the page? Sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation like this. We'll go back and we'll grab some lorem ipsum text. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that at the beginning of the uh, page here. Ah, here's an interesting one. Look at that. See, I'm at the top of the page. I'm, I'm desperately trying to get above the table. What I need is another paragraph mark up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple at the end. I'm going to grab my table and I'm going to move it just down a line or two, thereby giving me space up here. Okay, so let's go back. We'll grab our lorem ipsum. We'll paste it in here. And then let's do what Jeff was asking, where you get yourself into a situation like that. So here's a situation where I've got one page a table, and, a, and then another random page over here. Again, the importance of paragraph marks. You can see that there's a, a dangling paragraph there. You typically don't want to control your vertical white space with paragraphs. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to hit delete, 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 delete. Get rid of all my paragraphs at the bottom. Okay. So now I don't have any unnecessary stuff and I've lost that second page. You might want to go like this and hit like that to get a couple more spaces. Instead of adding paragraph marks in order to get vertical white space, instead think about formatting your paragraph. So if I right click here and I say paragraph, under line and page breaks, you can control those things. Here I'm going to say after how many points of space are there. I've got 11 0.25, maybe we'll make it 25. See how it suddenly got wider? You can tell that that vertical white space is attached to this 
paragraph mark because when I click on that paragraph, I get this vertical space here. If we did it like this, and I click on that area, you see, that's the vertical white space. That's the 11.25, that space right there. We can actually turn that down. If I go here and I say, just give me four. See how the gray area got smaller? I could take this paragraph mark and click it and say, I want 25. And there's that extra space. Now, if you want to learn more about styles and how to modify an entire paragraph worth of styles, go ahead and take a look at my other Word videos. Uh, and feel free to comment in the uh, YouTube comments. Be nice, and I will be, uh, maybe I'll do a video for you. Thanks.